In today's tutorial, I'll show you how you can easily upload files with your AWS Amplify project. And this is what the final result will look like. You'll have one button where you can choose a file to upload, as well as a button for uploading the actual file. And so this is what it will look like. You can choose a file. I'm just going to do a test image that I created, and then hit the button Upload File. And once it successfully uploads, you see a message letting you know that the file has successfully been uploaded. And now if we go to our S3 bucket where we're storing these files, you should see the image that we just uploaded. And as you can see here, this is that S3 test image I just uploaded. And if we go ahead and click on this and hit download, and then go ahead and open the image, we can confirm that this was the image that we just uploaded. And to begin this tutorial, I'll go ahead and go back to my code. And here is the code from the previous tutorial. And if you haven't watched my previous tutorial, I show you exactly step by step how to set up a AWS Amplify project from scratch. So if you want this exact code, you can go ahead and follow my previous tutorial and come back to this video once you're done. And to start the tutorial now, I'll go ahead and just revert the code back to the end of the last tutorial that I made. And so now if we go ahead and just run the actual project, um, it's going to want to make sure it's exactly how I left it off. And so this will be like what the final result will be. But for right now, it's going to start over. And so this is like how I left the last video. And the steps I'll be showing you for adding the storage option to your Amplify project will be coming from this link, which is like the AWS Amplify documentation. And I'll be sure to leave a link in the description so you can follow along if you want. And so now if we go back to the React project, the very first thing we want to do is to go ahead and just like add the storage option to our AWS Amplify project. And we can go ahead and do that by going back to our code editor and opening up a terminal and just typing the command Amplify storage add. And for the first option, go ahead and select content. And here it's going to ask us to provide a name. I'll just go ahead and just do something like file example. And here I'm just going to use the default bucket name. And then here I'll just select auth users only. And here I can select the kind of permissions that I want the authenticated users to have. I'll go ahead and just use the spacebar to select create slash update as well as read and hit enter once I'm done. And it's going to ask us to add a Lambda trigger. Uh, in this tutorial, I won't be doing that. So I'll click no. And now it's, it will say like successfully added resource file example locally. And once you see this message, that means you've done all the steps correctly. So all we need to do now is go ahead and run the command Amplify push to push these changes to our Amplify project in the cloud. And if you do see the screen where it says, are you sure you want to continue? Go ahead and just click Y for yes. And now it will update in the cloud. And I'll resume this video once it's done. And now my resources have been successfully updated. As you can see here, it says all resources have been updated in the cloud. So now for the first step, I'll go ahead and import the storage object from AWS Amplify. You can do that by going to the import statement and just type in storage up here and hit save. And for the second step, I'll go ahead and just create a new function that will actually upload our files. And I'll go ahead and paste it here. And what this function does is basically call the storage object and call the put function that it has. And here we're just like naming the file as well as the actual file data that we're uploading to S3. And here the content type is we're just specifying the type of content that this file is, whether it's like a text file, MP3 file, etc. And then here on line 22, I'm just console logging the result that we get back from this like storage.put function. And once we create our upload file function, the next step is to go ahead and create a variable, which will store the data that we're trying to upload to the S3 bucket. And we can do that just by going here and go ahead and just type in like file data as well as like set file data. And we'll just set it equal to like an empty object and it's safe. And once we're done with that, we can go ahead and just go down to like the return statement. And here we're just going to go ahead and create an input where we can actually upload like the files that we want. And I'll go ahead and just paste it here. Or I'll also add like this on change handler function, which will actually call the set file data type based on the actual object that we're uploading. And now once I hit save, and now if we go back to the React application, you can see I have like a choose file button. And I'll go ahead and just like add a div around it. That way it will leave you on the next line. It'll be a little bit easier to see. So now if I go ahead and hit save, it's on the next line. And then for the next step, I'll go ahead and just create a button as well to actually like upload the file once we've uh, selected the file from our computer. So we can do that by just creating like uh, just like a regular button. And then here I'll just do like on click. And I'll just go ahead and select the function that we created earlier, which we called like upload file and hit save. And now if we go back to our upload file, I just want to try to explain it a little more in detail. But basically, now that we have like the data inside of our file data variable, we can, we're able to access the name, which is like what we're passing in as the first argument. And then file data is the actual data that we're uploading to the S3 bucket. 
And in here for content type, we're just getting it from the file data itself. So we're just accessing that by doing like file data dot type. And so in this example, it will give us like a PNG because that is what the file I'm uploading is. And so now if we go back to our React project and hit refresh, oh, I just need to actually like give the button like some text. So I'll just do like upload file and hit save. And now if we go back to our React project, you can see we have like the choose file as well as upload file button. And one thing I forgot to add was that we also want to have the text uh, that will show us like if the file uploaded successfully. And so we can do that real easily just by creating another variable or we'll just call it like file status and do like set file status. And we'll just initially set this to false. And we'll just set this variable to true. Once the file has successfully uploaded, we can just do that like um, right after we upload the actual file. So we can just do that by doing like set file status and doing like true. And then we can scroll down. And now I just like add some text with a conditional saying like if file status is true, if it's true, then we'll go ahead and just uh, type in like the text saying file uploaded uh, successfully. And then we'll just do an empty string if it's not. And now if we go back to our example, we have the choose file and upload file button. And we don't see any text because the variable is false right now, but if we go ahead and just click on choose file and then do the S3 test image and then go ahead and click upload file. Now you can see the file was uploaded successfully. And now if we go back to the AWS like website and then if you go to the search bar and type in S3 and go ahead and just click on this first service. And then, so this is what it will look like basically with a bunch of different buckets. You should probably only see one if this is like the only bucket you've ever worked with. So go ahead and just click on it. And now go ahead and click on this public folder. And here you can now see the image that we just uploaded. And just like I showed you at the beginning of this video, if we go ahead and click on it and go ahead and click on the download button, you can now see like the image that we uploaded, which is like S3 test image. And now I'll show you what the entire code looks like. And this is the entire function. And I'll also make sure to leave a copy of this code in the description below. That way you can copy it if you want. If you have trouble with any of these steps, please feel free to leave a comment. I'll do my best to get back to you. Hopefully this video helped you. If you did, please like the video and don't forget to subscribe for more content.